I think I doubt that any other general prosecutor can, can do that. But we provide absolutely transparent uh, uh, procedure for the selection commission. And the procedure was widely accepted, both inside the country, including my opponents, uh, all the NGO, all the parliamentary forces, they widely accepted as an absolutely transparent and effective situation. And as I promised, the very next day, uh, before the 1st of December, exactly as I promised to Vice President Biden, uh, this person who was selected by the Selection Commission has appointed. Now, uh, all of us should understand that the Prosecutor General Office has no any opportunity under the law to make any cases against corruption because it immediately goes already from the 1st of, uh, of December, the day before yesterday, to the new Anti-Corruption Bureau and the new Anti-Corruption Prosecutor Office. And uh, I was very proud that uh, Jean-Claude Juncker, Angela Merkel, François Hollande, and everybody welcome it as a very strong position of uh, anti-corruption prosecutor and general prosecutor office. Uh, for the uh, prosecutor position and for G I, inspector general, I am also proud that uh, exactly as we agreed with the, your minister of justice guy and your embassy, uh, the office of inspector general is already established. It is coordinated, not by general prosecutor, by, but the uh, deputy of general prosecutor, Mr. Sakvarelidze, exactly as we agreed with the vice president and with the ambassador. For the other continuation with the prosecutor, uh, General Shokin, uh, uh, and uh, other things, I think I will speak with the vice president Biden, and I doubt that it would be theoretically even possible to make any decision without uh, any arguments uh, before. The Vice President's going to take up with you and we'll have a more detailed discussion about it. Um, Thank you. Thank you, John. The Situation Room. Hello. Hello. Joe Biden. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice President. Your call is reconvened. Petro, can you hear me? Yeah, now it's better. I can, I can hear you better, too. I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. Um, you, you were saying, I didn't, I missed what you were saying. Yeah. So, first of all, I'm very happy to be here. Second, this is very valuable for me that you find out a time for me, even in Minnesota. And I'm dreaming some days to be with you in Minnesota. <laughs> That That's easy, recommend. man. I tell you what, I'd like to be with you instead of Minnesota right now, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> the third, I have a, some positive and negative news. I will start with the okay. positive news. Well, good. Joe, I have a second positive news for you. Yesterday, I met meet with the general prosecutor, Shokin. Yes. And despite of the fact that we didn't have any corruption charges, we don't have any information about the, he doing something wrong, I especially asked him, no, it was the day before yesterday, I especially ask him to resign. In uh, as a, his uh, position as a state person, and despite of the fact that he has a support in the parliament, and as a finish of my meeting with him, he promised me to give me the statement on, on resignation. And one hour ago, he bring me the written uh, statement of his resignation. Great. And this is my second step for keeping my promises. I agree. President Poroshenko? Yes. One moment for Vice President Biden. <laughs> Introducing President Poroshenko. Hey, Mr. President, Joe Biden, how are you? Very well indeed. All the time when I hear your voice, Good. it's a great pleasure for me. 
I'm on Air Force Two, and I think we're going to stay connected. We just took off, and I'm hoping this connection will stay open. Assuming that uh, um, uh, there is a new government and a, uh, a new prosecutor general, uh, I am prepared to do a public signing of the commitment for the billion dollars. Again, I'm not suggesting that that's what you want or don't want. I'm just suggesting that that's what we're prepared to do. And again, it wouldn't be finalized until, you know, the IMF pieces are written. Extremely strong motivation. One of the possible candidates was leader of my faction, Lutsenko, who is the public figure. If you think that the political motivated figure would be not very good from your point of view, I recall this proposal, I do not propose, because nobody knows that I want to propose Lutsenko. In this situation, I take uh, all the political motivated figures out from this process. All right, well, look, let me, um, uh, let me, uh, when I, you and I finish speaking, let me huddle with my team, talk over what you and I just talked about. I agree with you, there is a sense of urgency here. President, just one minute for Vice President Biden. Thank you. Introducing President Poroshenko. Hey, Mr. President, Joe Biden, how are you? Very well indeed. As usual when I hear your voice. Look, what, what we're doing now, I think that within last three weeks, we demonstrate the real, real great progress in the reform. We voted in the parliament 100% tariffs, despite of the fact that the uh, IMF expected only 75%. We're launching the real reform of the state-owned enterprises. We launch a reform for the prices for the medicine, removing all the obstacles. Oh, so you did a lot. I agree. I agree. Hey, Mr. President, Joe Biden, how are you? Very well indeed. As usual, when I hear your voice. Thank you. Very well, much. you are doing very well. Congratulations on uh, on getting the new prosecutor general. I know there's a lot more that has to be done, but I really. Uh, I really think that's, I think that's good, uh, and I understand you're working with the ROD in the coming days on a number of additional laws to secure the IMF, so, but congratulations on installing the new prosecutor general. It's going to be critical uh, for him to work quickly to repair the damage that Shokin did, and I'm a man of my word, I, uh, and that now that the new prosecutor general's in place, we're ready to move forward in signing that new $1 billion loan guarantee. And I don't know how you want to go about that. I'm not going to be able to get to uh, um, to Kiev uh, anytime soon, um, meaning the next month or so. And uh, um, and uh, I don't know whether you could either sign it with our ambassador, or if you came here, we could sign it. Or if you want, uh, we're inviting Groisman here later. Uh, uh, I'm going to be talking to him later this morning. Not for that purpose. We're inviting him. Uh, to Washington, and so uh, it's, I'll, I'll leave it up to you as to how you want that done and when you want it done. Uh, first of all, thank you very much indeed for these words of support. Believe me that it is, was a very tough challenge and very difficult job, and uh, Mrs. Uh, Timoshenko and Mr. Leshko fraction tried to break this because we not only voted for the new prosecutor general, which we do in a very short period of time, within one day, we changed the law. By the way, in this law, we are presenting the, set, the new structure of the general prosecutor office, including the general inspection. As we yeah, agree that, with, that's real. And the second, second thing, I uh, immediately invite Lutsenko and said that uh, he should contact uh, your embassy, and I would be very pleased if you will have a certain person uh, who can come either from Washington or 
uh, whatever. We have here, I don't remember his name, the Ukrainian origin uh, pros American prosecutor. He is a little bit yeah. old. I sent to the Jeffrey his name. And he was ready to come and to be assistant and advisor. Uh, got with it. a very good experience in the American system and he can be the person of trust with the new prosecution system. I think this is exactly the right time to do that and if he is still ready to come and to cooperate from the very first step, from the very first minute of the new prosecutor, that is exactly what I am looking for. Well, let me uh, let me get in contact with the Justice Department and uh, pursue that. I'll get his name and uh, let me find out where that is because it is in our interest, obviously, to provide professional assistance as quick as we can so this gets up and started in the right direction. So I, I will move on that as soon as we hang up. Uh, I'll put that in train and I'll get back to you as to what we uh, what I'm able to do. Absolutely. Second, thank you very much indeed. This is exactly what I'm looking for. The second thing is that I want to thank you that you give me your word that immediately when we change the legislation and I appoint uh, the new prosecutor general, and it would be Yuri Lutsenko as we agreed on our previous meeting in Washington. And uh, when it happened, um, we can have this long guarantee. And thank you very much. The Situation Room. Hello. Hello. Joe Biden. Oh, thank you, Mr. Vice President. Your call is reconvened. The same way that I predict the fraction of Batkivshina and the fraction of Summer Pomoch leave the coalition. And in the coalition left less than 226 votes. So we do not have a majority. I personally, together with the Prime Minister, asked Radical Party Veshko to join the coalition that formally we can keep the legitimacy. But we don't have neither legitimacy in the parliament nor in the, in the public uh, in the country. And this so if I understand this correctly, there was a no confidence vote. You blocked the no confidence vote, so our city is still there. But then there was a vote on the on the package that the government had uh, put forward, and that 247 voted against that. So in terms of moving forward with additional reforms and additional things you need to do, you don't have a coalition to do that? Is that what you're telling me? It, look, uh, not exactly. So, uh, first, he gave an assessment voting in the parliament, and parliament gave a negative uh, report to the, to the activity of the cabinet of ministers. That was the first thing. Uh, this is not I, I, immediately follow the, uh, or means the resignation, but this is just a political estimation. Then, when it put the confidence vote, me organized that uh, in my fraction and in other fraction it was not enough vote. Also, Prime Minister works for that for sure, but I uh, blocked the, uh, the re resignation of the government because I promised to leave. Just because. But now, when two fractions uh, from four, two fractions from four, leave the coalition, we do not have a majority. Hello? Yes? Yes, one moment for Vice President Biden. Thank you. Introducing President Poroshenko. Hey, Mr. President. Very good to hear you. Mr. Good to hear you. By the way, uh, you know, uh, um, you and I have talked about this a lot before. I guess Monday's the second anniversary. Remember, I'm counting on you to be the, f the founding father of the modern Ukraine. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. And I think that the, this message is very important. I just want to be a little bit more accurate. 
so we have no doubt that we should intensively implement the reform. But we should implement the reform with the way that people trust them. Because if people do not trust the reform, this reform is impossible to implement. This is point number one. Point number two, we do not have a majority in the parliament. That is the main uh, message. With the, this do, is, do you can have a majority? You can make any calculation, uh, uh, but... Uh, with the radical party? I, ha I have uh, in my party uh, in my fraction, 136 members of parliament, and from them, 16 are ready to write down the uh, statement for going out from the coalition. He has 81. So, altogether, this is 201, and we have lack of more than 20 votes. And even if Leshko can return or not return or going like that, we do not have a physical majority. This is the case. For the, well, how did for, you get the reforms passed just this week? Say it again. How did you get the reforms passed this week related because, to the IMF? Because, because I ask personally that fraction who go out from the coalition, I mean Samapomich and Timoshenko, that was my special meeting with them. They give me a message that because of the trust to you, Mr. President, we vote for the IMF and for the visa free and for the anti-corruption, but we do not vote just because of the person of the prime minister. And that is, his, that, uh, that is their message. And that's why I'm very happy that we are strong enough and brave enough and lucky enough actually to have these changes now, but we should have an intensive negotiation how to find out the way how to return this fraction back to the coalition. But we demonstrate that the, everything is okay, people are happy, we have a majority in the parliament. This is not true. The other fraction we can invite, that they, but they speak only with the language of the political corruption. And I hate the idea to, after the Maidan, to buy the votes. President Poroshenko? Yes. One moment for Vice President Biden. <laughs> Introducing President Poroshenko. I, I know you're working hard, but what is your latest plan for a new government? I've heard uh, from my team you're now looking at a government led by uh, Grossman, the speaker, and uh, and uh, also that uh, that uh, um, just in the past uh, uh, day or so, uh, um, uh, I'm not sure the exact timing, but uh, just very recently uh, you had uh, Juresco on a Facebook page talking about wanting to uh, consider being prime minister uh, uh, with a technocratic government. And I know you need 226 votes for whatever you do. Tell me about what's going on, if you're willing. It was my key priority to avoid early parliamentary election. The new coalition or restore coalition should be pro-European and reform-oriented. Kamapomich received my proposal about the technocratic government of Yaresko and to join coalition because the reason of the political crisis is that the three fractions, Samapomich, Batkivshina, Timoshenko and Leshko, go out from the coalition and we left together with the prime minister in the minority. The, yes. I invite Samapomich and propose them to either to support Yareska or to propose the, his leader as a next prime minister. They said that they are ready to, uh, they take some time, and they, after a few days they say that they are ready even, just to start negotiation about possible coalition, but not to be member of coalition, just vote for that. I said this is not, not possible under our constitution. This is impossible. They should sign up personally their, their membership in coalition. 
And they put even for that three preconditions. Point number one, changes or resignation of the general prosecutor, which I said, which has already happened because uh, I sent the, the resignation letter to the parliament. And now it is in the parliament, it should be done uh, immediately. Second, the changes in the Central Election Commission. I said, I don't understand why Central Election Commission is part of the coalition when we don't have an election, but okay. I'm ready to change the Central Election Commission. But the third, they say, we want to change the election law. I said, no, because I completely against the early parliamentary election. And the changes in the election legislation will be stimulated for you, for Timoshenko, the early parliamentary election, and this is completely unacceptable for me. They said that without this uh, election law, which is no connection, they do not open even discussion about the coalition membership. And without some homage, with the rejection of Timoshenko and uh, Leshko, we don't have for Yereska 226. As far as I understand, the, uh, our partners and our American friends has a significant influence on the summer Pomich leaders. And I asked uh, Pablo to call Tori, and I asked uh, to contact Ambassador, maybe to increase the pressure and to support uh, Yarieska candidacy uh, by some uh, Two hours ago, immediately after the face uh, uh, book message of Yarieska, I called uh, Sadovi once again. Unfortunately, he staying somewhere in Europe for the holiday, and he said that uh, he is not in a position to uh, to support Yereska and to give now uh, any positive answer. And this is in the situation when uh, our U United States partners give grants to Sama Pomic and give him the significant financial support. So that situation, I hate the idea to keep uncertainty anymore. And now, uh, on, in my building, I have a Yatsenyuk, and uh, we launching, we, we started negotiation on other candidacy. So if Samopomic return, we're ready to support Yariska, but if it would be no Samopomic, uh, we now start discussion about Groisman. You remember Groisman, during your very famous and beautiful speech in the parliament, you have a discussion with him. Uh, no, I remember. Yeah. President, just one minute for Vice President Biden. Thank you. Introducing President Poroshenko. Now I have, and I think we can trust each other, the uh, party of Arseni together with me. They were together during the voting of the uh, general prosecutor, voting of the government, voting of, voting of the IMF, and I hope we have a significant level of support. Unfortunately, this is not fully enough. This is almost majority in the power. And those who go to the United States, Sama Pomic, uh, Timoshenko, and Leshko, who do not go there, for different reasons, completely against that. Because this is the political reason. This has nothing to do with the essence of the, uh, <coughs> of the agreement. This is just a dirty political trick. And that's what yeah. I'm asking uh, from the Jeffrey. Please do not give the grants to the summer Pomich. Do not give them the money. Because this is not a financing for the opposition party. This is the financing of the absolutely irresponsible political leader who is doing very bad things for the 
future of my country and for the Ukraine, for the security and for the stability. That, I think, first of all, I am completely satisfied with the messages they received in Washington. They were quite strong and quite decisive. Yeah. I think that, that, would, that would be a good idea if you continue to have a press on Samopomich, because if Leshko and Timoshenko, this is a loss on Samopomich, because you, have, you support them, in that situation they could give a positive response, because without Samopomich, we cannot even expect any positive things on the constitutional thing, uh, thing you. Okay, all right. Well, look, that would be impossible, I, 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 because if I can count on me with a law, election law, I can find out the votes without some apomich. I cannot find out the votes uh, on the constitutional changes. This is very simple. All right. We, we, we will do everything to help you to get the votes. Mr. President, my friend, I'm not going to ask how you are, but I hope you're well. Uh, <laughs> I'm always feeling well, Mr. Vice President, when I'm speaking with you. I understand that that the minister of economy whose name i can't pronounce i apologize yeah abramovich i i learned it for after three months of work of his work in the government i understand that other cabinet members signed on to it didn't they or did they no 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 i don't know may, may, maybe it something happened but i don't know what any other cabinet members is signed but the uh, i doubt that it it is happening but the uh, the statement of the uh, Abramovichus was very dangerous. From my from my point, I never said it publicly, but from my point, it was extremely irresponsible. But it's happened, and I make immediate meeting with him after his statement, and said, "Look." You representing me, President. It was me who invite you in the country. It was me who support you all the time. It was me who give you, in a violation of law, the security guard from the secret services, for you not afraid of anything. It was me who insisted and support all your initiatives. I give you Ukrainian citizenship. And you still have my full support. Let me ask you one thing before I forget. Privat Bank. Um, uh, I understand uh, the, uh, the, uh, the governor of the bank is, uh, is tentative about setting a date certain for the transition to take place. And I'm being told secondhand that I don't know if this is her position for sure, that she is unsure of a date until she gets an agreement from you. I told, here's what I've told them. I've told them to get back to her and set a date, and I would talk to you about the date. Um, because this is getting very, very close. What I don't want to have happen, I don't want Trump to get in a position where he thinks he's about to buy onto a policy where the financial system is going to collapse and he's going to be looked to to pour more money into Ukraine. That's how he'll think about it before he gets sophisticated enough to know the details. So anything you can do to push the, the, the Pravat Bank uh, um, to closure so that the IMF loan comes forward, I would respectfully suggest is critically important to your economic as well as physical security. I know it's difficult. I know Kolomorsky is a pain in the ass and a problem for everybody, but, um, but it really is critical that, uh, that, that, that we, you guys figure this one out. And you've been good. You've, you've publicly spoken out as I've asked you to do. You've done that. I just want you to give the, uh, what, what she called the commissioner, the governor, the, the, the governor of the bank, give her some spine, uh, let her know that you're going to be standing there um, when she sets a date and moves forward. This is very important what I hear from you, and uh, I think that, that on the 22nd of, 
of November. On, on uh, Tuesday, I will have a final report from Ernst & Young audit. And we agreed that me, Prime Minister, Minister of Finance, Governor, I invite Arseni and our uh, security officers should meet and make a decision about the date. Uh, the only reason I have after 22nd, when I have an audit report, we have a uh, voting of the budget in the parliament where Skolomoisky has a significant number of members of parliament. And the prime minister asked me to vote budget first and then launching the process. This is the confidential information, but... Uh, I, I, I will keep that with me. I, I will keep that with me.